Hi, this is uh, Jurgen Rasmussen speaking. Welcome to uh, Provocative Hypnosis Vlog Number Two. This series is titled Psychopaths, Lies, and Shadows. Now, if we look at symptoms and how people develop various types of, of psychological symptoms, the common denominator is that people are afraid of their own experience. If you're a human being and you have a pulse, you're going to have a lot of different emotions, uh, moods, states of mind, internal experiences emerging moment by moment. And some of these experiences can be unpleasant. And what often happens to people is that they mark out certain emotional states, certain cognitions, certain emotional experiences as unacceptable, as something that they must not experience and something that is essentially not them. And when this happens, people have a tendency to develop symptoms. And, and this can be symptoms of various sorts. Sometimes people develop uh, just repeat emotions that, that are stuck, that just gets replayed time and time again. And essentially, it's the resistance. It's, it's the idea that they must not feel it that actually prevents the whole thing from resolving on its own and, and moving on. At other times, people may develop addictions and compulsions to constantly distract themselves from the unwanted or undesirable experience. Sometimes, if the idea of experiencing something is scary enough, we won't even know that we have the emotion. So there are two kind of tricks of the mind that tend to be at play. One is what's usually called psychosomatic disorders or, or mind-body issues. Uh, the person might begin to uh, bite their tongue, for example, as a recent client of mine did. Or they might develop chronic migraine headaches or, or just a constant fatigue or uh, low back pain, for example. And as long as the person's conscious attention is on these physical symptoms, the person is completely distracted from what's happening internally. As a matter of fact, the person will often get quite pissed off at you if you even suggest that there might be some psychological issue or, or, or emotional conflict at play internally because... As far as they're concerned, uh, it's just pain. They don't have any any internal struggle or conflict. They're, they're not even aware of it. At other times, and, and this is really the topic of this particular uh, vlog, at other times, people will project the unacceptable emotion or trait onto someone else out there with the greatest hook. So it, it's the person out there that's really pissing me off. So if you, for example, look at some of the people who, who march in these anti-war demonstrations, and, and not to get political uh, in any direction, but, but some of the people who do these marches for peace can sometimes, especially the, the, the guys in front uh, who are like the repeat customers uh, on these marches for peace, some of them are, are, are some of the most aggressive people you can ever find. Like they, they throw rocks and, and, and stones for peace. And sometimes these are people who, behind the, the peace, um, are people with a lot of anger who can't know the anger as their own anger. So they project it onto the war outside of themselves and go, that's what's really what's really ticking me off. There's a lot of amusing uh, examples of this in, in culture and, and, and in life. For example, did you know that there's been some studies showing that some of the most religious anti-gay people, you, you know, the, the ones with the posters who says that gay people will burn in hell and that Jesus hates fags and, and all that sorts of stuff. Some of these people, when they've been shown 
movies uh, of gay people having sex have a tendency to have more arousal internally than average heterosexual people. And there's, of course, a lot of media scandals where, where you have the, uh, the priest who's been uh, proclaiming that homosexuals will burn in hell, and then after a, a decade of this, they're, they're caught with the, the young male prostitute in, in so, some hotel room somewhere. And this is really fascinating. Something else that's fascinating, too, is, is that very often they, they claim to have a lot of regret and, and that they're now ashamed and that they're now fearful uh, since people know about it. But, but think about it. If there's some all-knowing, eternal god up there that's been watching them the entire time they really sh really should have been afraid from from the first second of, of of engaging in this so i'm not saying that all people who claim to hate uh homosexuals are are necessarily gay or or, or have those impulses strongly what i am saying is that some of the people who do that are people who really have those tendencies but knowing that they have those tendencies is so unacceptable and so scary that they don't even know it. It's a bit like with the pain people. So they project it onto the homosexuals out there, and then their life's mission becomes to uh, transform the, the fags, or, or to heal them, or cure them, or, or at least damn them, so, so that they've done their job on this marvelous spinning planet that, that we're on. Sometimes when clients come in, I'd like to share a, a couple of stories around this uh, from, from my practice. Sometimes when clients come in, helping them to, to discover and own those completely unacceptable aspects of being alive as something that they're actually experiencing can be very healing and very transformative. So I'm instantly reminded of a client I saw perhaps a decade ago who really wanted to become a mother and she had a lot of struggles and a lot of arguments with with her husband and uh, this client really identified as a, a, a nice caring compassionate human being and, and, and she really seemed to be and, and she probably is uh, on many many levels and she was a strong believer in personality uh, being mainly the result of genetics and the thing for her was that her she said that her grandfather had been a, a horrible psychopath who had raped and, and molested and cheated and manipulated and, and done a lot of horrible stuff and her father was really no saint either so one of her fears was that she might bring a psychopath uh, into the world now, this woman, of course, had a very strong identification with the, the other uh, part of the pole, you know, being, being caring, being compassionate, being, being a very nice human being. So what I did with her during hypnosis was that once she was in a, a pretty stable, very focused uh, hypnotic state, I asked her to essentially hallucinate her grandfather in front of her and to begin by essentially telling him off by by saying to him you are violent so so by first saying the sentence as in you are violent I then had her apply to self and say I am violent and what immediately happened is that she flashed back to a memory where she slapped her husband and spit on him. And before she had a chance to escape, I, I had her really own the anger and really own the violence as her experience, as something that she had been engaged in. And to then view her grandfather through that lens, through that acknowledgement, with the words welcome home and then she went on she went you're ruthless you're manipulative I had her then apply to self 
and say, I am ruthless. I am manipulative. And her mind once again flashed back to relevant memories where she discovered that she was in quite she was in fact behaving quite ruthlessly and quite manipulatively uh, in her relationship and she was actually able to find all the qualities that she had attributed to her grandfather internally without me prompting her she ended up saying oh my god I'm my grandfather this is me and she had a shocking insight where, where she discovered that she was essentially behaving in that way in her relationship and, and just couldn't see it at all. Now, after doing this, we also had her look at her grandfather and after accessing some of her own most cherished values, which in her case was altruism and, and compassion, she looked at her grandfather to, to see if she could find any of it. And, and she remembered that he once, with risk of his own life, um, helped a drowning kid not to drown. So she could find some of those qualities also in her grandfather. And by doing this, she was able to recover more of her own humanity and, and internally more of his humanity as well. This was a huge breakthrough to her. She, she called me later and, and, and reported that she had been more or less ecstatic for a month and, and blissful and, and peaceful around it and, and that the relationship issues had vanished. Another client I had had the most gruesome horrible childhood that you can imagine. She and her sister was constantly raped by their father from childhood until their teens. Uh, the father hit the mother and had also raped the mother. So, so this, was, this was as horrible as it can get. Now, th this is decades ago, so this woman is now a mother, she's married, she has a very nice career. The father is dead. She had sporadic contact with her mother. And my client had a lot of anger issues and a lot of anxiety issues. And one thing that she told me was that she was extremely angry at her mother for being a fucking liar. And when she said fucking liar, she was referring to the fact that her mother had never owned up to the abuse. She, she had never been willing to acknowledge what the father had actually done. She had tried to joke it away or distract away and apparently she had even set out this this rumor that well if anything happened you know the daughters must have seduced him. And my client said I'm so angry with my mother I need for her to be honest so that I can be at peace. Now, my job here was essentially to help the client to acknowledge the liar within. So, I, I said to her, I said, look, what you've been through is truly horrible. What your father did was wrong. It's completely wrong. Morally, ethically, psychologically, it's just wrong. And I, and I really wish that you, you didn't have to go through those experiences. And I also really understand that you want your mother to be honest, that, that you want her to do the right thing and be honest. It would be the right thing to do, no doubt about it. But I have a challenge for you. Is it really true that you need your mother to be honest for you to have peace inside? And she shot back and she said, of course, of course I do. I said, really? Is this really true? And I challenged her on it, and she got so pissed off that she actually left my office. And she was scheduled back uh, a week later, and, and she came back a week later, and she said, the first two days I was so angry with you, but, but the question kind of kept harassing me. Is it true that I need my mother, to be honest, for me to be at peace? And she realized that the answer was no. And instantly she had a huge relief 
on the inside. So she was very happy about this, and I said, yeah, that's, that's all very good, but there's something else here as well. You really are your mother's, your mother's daughter. She's lying. You're lying. You really are your mother's daughter. And once again, she got really, really upset and really, 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 really provoked. And I said, look, your mother is lying. She's not admitting to what actually happened. That's a lie. I said, but you're lying as well. You have for years gone around telling yourself the story that you need your mother, to be honest, for you to be at peace. That was a lie. So now you know that if you were to feel any pain, it's an invitation for you to look at your own lies. Because you'll feel pain to the extent that you're lying. Now the other lie here is that is the idea that my mother should be honest. And I said to her, let's look at the evidence. She's been lying for decades. She's lying. There's overwhelming evidence that she's lying. Now you're lying by creating the story that says that a liar should be honest. You're lying by creating a story that says that my mother really should be honest. When the truth is, she's not. So she really shouldn't be honest until she's honest. In the same way that if it's raining outside, it really should, shouldn't be sunshine until it is sunshine. And she had a very strong insight, which was essentially that other people may very well be lying. But if it, it's really driving me crazy, that's an invitation to look at my own level of honesty in the moment. Now, let me conclude by, by saying something here. Both of these clients had really transformative shifts by owning their own, their own shadow experiences. So this is something that's, that's worth looking into. And if, if you want to read more about it, I've written about it quite extensively in my latest book, provocative suggestions. Um, let me end by saying this. I am not claiming that people are all equally lying or all equally psychopathic. The label psychopath may or may not be an accurate label to describe the, all the processes that's happening within that grandfather that manifests itself in the world in behavior that seems to be devoid of any compassion or, or, or any conscience. And it, it might also be the best decision to not have anything to do with them or, or to have very, very strict boundaries. So that may all be a, a accurate enough map. But if you have the idea that, that conflict is exclusively out there, you're missing an important internal piece. So, for example, if someone else's selfishness seems to be driving you crazy, you know, one thing is to just notice the selfishness, but, but if it's really, really <clears throat> irking at you on the inside, then you likely have more of those qualities going on in the moment that you like to admit. Because think about it, if, that's, if that person is acting in a selfish way, they're doing what they want to do not what you want them to do. And if you can own that, if you can own your own selfishness in that, you can embrace more of the human experience both in yourself and also in other people. So, hope you enjoy this little piece. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to, uh, to subscribe to the, uh, to the YouTube channel or email me with, with any questions or comments. Thanks.